everyone and welcome to the next video in our little short series of videos that we're running this week. And in this one we are going to talk about uh, the worst signings of the season. We're going to put together a little uh, worst 11 if you like. Um, so this will be players that were either signed as permanent transfers or loanies at some point during the 23-24 season. So that could have been last summer or it could have been in January. Um, so yes, make sure you're uh, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Sorry, we're close to 500 subs. If you can help us get over the line, that would be absolutely ace, uh, and help us uh, get our live streams monetized so that we can start to um, earn some dosh. Hopefully, to make these streams better and get some new equipment, like a new webcam, which is looking extremely grainy at the moment. But, <laughs> uh, yes, don't hate us. Yes, that's very important. Yes, this is a, only our humble opinion. <laughs> Um, although I've seen some of the takes from people like Garth Crooks yeah, and quite frankly true. go and give the hate to him because that <laughs> motherfucker is all over the place so right so, okay so um, I think there will be some crossover here so um, I've um, sort of changed mine a little bit um, so I've I've potentially put some of the players I think you might come up with okay this is a bit annoying my phone won't open <laughs> right okay um, <laughs> that would have been good wouldn't it <laughs> so I've, I think some of the players I feel like although you might have or exactly the same thing, and then, and then Just, sorry, what sorry to interrupt. Anthony was signed a year before. Oh, he was 2022, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I can change that. That's fine. I can easily change that. I changed, I took him out because I thought I'll get hate for him, so I'll put him back in. I'll just take the hate. <laughs> <laughs> we got thick skins, it's fine, <laughs> right? Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, cool. Shall I go first? Yeah, so just, just, to, just to be clear, um, in terms of our criteria for this. Not only are we looking for players that have been generally just really bad, but we're also looking at players that have provided really bad value for money. So it might be that you know they've played every game and done okay, but they've had a massive price tag and have not lived up to it. Mm -hmm. Could be players that got injured, or it could just be players that have been utter dog shit all season um, and and not not done what they want, what the teams wanted them to. So uh, yeah, who have you got in goal then? Dan? So my goalkeeper, I've gone for Sanchez. Oh Chelsea. Yeah. 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 Um, forgotten man really. exactly that yeah you would you would forget that he was there um and i actually i was sort of just to give myself a bit of a help i was just going through all the transfers this year um and i thought fucking hell yeah chelsea signed sanchez in gold didn't they well he was their number one goalie for a while yeah and then he got injured and then um petrovic. Pe petrovic came in and yeah and then sanchez completely forgotten man and i know i think he was only on loan i don't know unless they did sign him i thought they, they, signed they might him. have signed him so with that backs me up even more than, <laughs> um so yeah I, mean, I think obviously the there might have been some other obvious choices but I, I went for him because I thought it'd be a little bit different and in my opinion he was a flop yeah that's fair so on that basis then who do you think I've picked then Anana no okay I nearly did <laughs> I very nearly did pick Anana um but I've gone with James Trafford mm -hmm. of Burnley um so my reasoning here is that you know there's two ways of looking at this. You could think it's a bit unfair because he's a young goalkeeper. He's playing in a pretty poor team. He's getting battered with shots left, right and centre all season. Um, but I just felt like off the back of the season that he had, there was a lot of hype with him off the under-19, under-20 championships, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Under-21s, yeah, it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he didn't, it was. didn't concede a goal in the entire tournament yeah. or whatever it was. Um, and I just felt like he, he made up quite a few errors... He didn't look comfortable. I think he was not dropped in the end. And he did get dropped. Yeah, he lost his position. Although the keeper that came in, I can't remember what his name was, but he didn't exactly come no. himself in glory either. It's interesting. He's been called of... up. I know it's provisional England squad, but it's interesting. He's been called up for that. I suspect that his call up. I mean, he's not going to make the final cut, mm. but I suspect his call up is because he's been involved with the youth setup. We know yeah. that Southgate likes that link, yeah. so he's probably just bringing him up for kind of the experience of being in a, in a, in a camp, if you like, yeah. um, for for a big tournament. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like for night that I think they paid 19 million for him. Um, I just don't think he ever really quite lived up to the hype. I think we were all looking at him, thinking, "Oh, is he is he going to be the long term successor here to Jordan Pickford for England?" Mm. Um, and he's got some work to do. I mean, I don't I don't see a club coming in for him. So a drop down to the championship may be just what he needs to sort of get his confidence again and, and um, maybe do what sort of Nick Pope did mm. uh, at Burnley. So yeah, so he's uh, those are our goalkeeper flops of the season. Um, and of course, let us know in the comments down below as we go through uh, what you think and what your flop 11 may might be. Um, right, into defence. So I've gone 3-4-3. Three, three. I've also gone 3-4-3. Three, three. Okay, so defenders I struggled with, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so do um, I. So in the end, I've had to, I've got effectively a fullback as part of my back three, but yeah. it's fine. It's just three defenders. Yeah. It doesn't really matter in, the, in this scenario. So I'll, um, I'll go through all three one by one and then okay. you can do yours. Um, so I've gone Rob Holding, 
Okay. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'd forgotten he'd even moved to Crystal Palace. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, that... Two million is all they cost, and they still didn't get value for no. money. Um, which is kind of weird because, you know, he he, he did okay at Arsenal. He was never a standout player. He was obviously never going to get in front of Gabriel or Saliba. But I don't think he was so bad that he should have gone, that he would have gone to Crystal Palace and just not featured. Mm. Um, so I think he's he was really poor. And again, Joachim Anderson and, and Mark Gaia for Palace were, were pretty good for most of the season. So uh, I think he deserves a spot in there. I've gone for uh, De Sassi yeah. at Chelsea. £40 mm-hmm. million pounds they cost, he cost. Uh, I'm pretty sure Lee on the podcast will back me up on this one. He's not definitely not a fan. Mm. Um, I think Chelsea's entire defensive unit um, have been pretty average this season, apart from maybe the, towards the end of the season where the, the whole team kind of got better. But De Sassi and, and Baddy Ashiel at centre back. To be honest, I would have had Baddy Ashiel in there if he'd been signed this season. Mm. So I think he's been worse. Um, but yeah, De Sassi's not not been up to it for me for me for for that sort of price tag. And the la- the last one I've gone for was a free transfer, and that's Ashley Young. Okay. Because. Um, his legs look gone. I mean, you know, it's been highlighted more in the last <laughs> month or so with some of the high pro- high profile things he did. Obviously, the Nottingham Forest game springs to mind. The pass that he gave away against Arsenal at the weekend. I mean, like that's an experienced player should not be playing a pass like that. Mm. Um, so, I just think that he, he's been really, really poor this season. Um, I think he did okay at the start of the season and gradually got worse and worse. But they've actually offered him another contract. They 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 triggered an extension, I think, in his contract for wow. another year. So, um, yeah, Everton fans, you've got another year of Ashley Young to look forward to. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's my back three. Interesting. Well, I don't have any the same. Oh, good. Yeah, okay, no, I like it. Surprising. I like um, it. So, my first one is, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Longley? Longley? Longley, Longley yeah. Um, for Aston Villa. He was at Spurs at some yes, point, wasn't he? The yeah. Before? So, came in, only made 14 appearances in total. And that's not necessarily starts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for, for someone that their parent club is Barcelona, um, to go to, no offence to Aston Villa, but to go to an Ast- a club like Aston Villa and, and barely be a part of their squad is, yeah. um, to me... Especially that's... when they lost um, what's his, Tyrone Minx yeah. to a long-term injury. Yeah. I think there's an, an opportunity to get in mm. there. Obviously, they, I know they signed Pau Torres as well, yeah. who, who I think made the spot his own eventually. Yeah, so that's why I've, I've um, stuck him in there. Um, this one, <laughs> I've gone for Timber. Yeah, um, I think that's fair. I, I genuinely do. You, is this the one you're worried we're going to get hate yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and my uh, attacking one as well for Anthony. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I've gone for Timber. Not I, nothing against the player whatsoever. I, I think he could turn out to be a really good player because I mean United were linked with him, and, and I was quite looking forward to hopefully getting him, but. In terms of you know value for money, he's barely played. Yeah, um, and the trouble is with ACL injuries is you never hundred percent know. I mean, I know that medical science is very good these days, and we've seen players like Van Dyke come back from mm. ACLs and still be pretty good. So, but you don't know. You no. don't know how it's going to affect them mentally, psychologically, uh, or physically rather. Mm. Um, so we obviously he did come back towards the end of last season. And in fact, the last game didn't he against Everton? He came off the bench. So we'll have to wait and see. But you know, there there is that risk there. I think it is fair. Because, you know, the flop term, and certainly in our interpretation anyway, yeah. is not necessarily just because you're a bad player. It's no. because a club has paid a lot of money for you, has then spent all season paying your wages and barely seen any of you. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that it's an accidental injury, it still means that you've, you're have you a flop because you're not providing value for money. Yeah. So, um, And my third defender is Regulon. Um, okay. Not the Brentford Regulon, but the United Regulon. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't um, been that great at Brentford either. To be no, honest. but he's he's featured a lot more. I mean, he went to United, and even when we didn't have a left back, we were playing Wan-Bissaka and Delo over Regulon. <laughs> um, it just didn't work out at all, and, and he ended up going back in the January transfer window, um, which I think was always agreed anyway. Yeah, wasn't it? it was always yeah, a six month loan anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think there's no denying that he was a flop at Man United. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Um, Shall I go midfield? midfield yeah, yep. go ahead and do your four um, midfielders. So I think there could be some crossover yeah, here. Yeah, I think there might be. Um, my first one is Phillips. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something funny to say, but there's no, there's no point with Calvin Phillips, is there? Um, yeah, poor blood. I, I don't really feel sorry for him, to be honest. He's yeah, me too. obviously made a, a dream move to a club like Man City. It's not worked out at all. He's he's lost his England place, and um, yeah. now he he looks like a bang average player at West Ham. I think he looks worse than that. I think he looks he looks so, he looks so out of his depth. Mm. 
you know, David Moyes did not utilise him properly at all. I think David Moyes hung him out to dry in certain cases. Um, but Calvin Phillips has gone from a team like Man City, and even though he wasn't playing that often, they keep the ball. In mm. training, they're taught to keep the ball. And he's going to West Ham, who are taught not to have the ball. Yeah. So it was, it was, a, it was an eyebrow-raising decision from West Ham's point of view, and equally so from Phillips. But maybe, excuse me, maybe he just thought, well, my options are pretty limited. I've not got anywhere else to go. If I stay at Man City, I have absolutely no chance of getting the England squad. So what have I got to lose? But in the end, I think this has done more harm than good mm. uh, to his own career. So we'll have to see how he does. Yeah. Um, next one might surprise some people because I've I've talked quite a lot about how much I like this player. Um, it's Mason Mount. <laughs> um, you had me for a second there. <laughs> I thought you were going to throw a curveball in there. Yeah, I think it's a fucking awful signing um, from start to finish. He's barely featured. I don't really know what he was brought in for because he, he plays in that number 10 role and he's never going to push Bruno out of that role. No. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think... And for 60-odd million for a player that was in the last year of their contract, I don't think he's added any value whatsoever. No. Chelsea, the only ones who were, who were smiling out of that day was Chelsea mm. um, for the money that's, that they received for him. But yeah. no, I think that's fair. Um, next one, I was sort of torn between two Chelsea midfielders. Um, one was Caicedo, but I think in recent weeks, maybe months, he's um, maybe started to provide a bit of value. Um, so I've gone for Lavia. Yeah. Because, um, again, I almost forgot he played for Chelsea, to be honest. I think he'd made three... Of, no. He did have injuries, in fairness. Yeah, but I think he played 13 minutes this season or something crazy, like that. That's isn't it? Um, he hasn't been injured all season either, no. so a lot of that is just mm. not being picked. Um, and to think there was a they, bidding war over him. And they paid, what, like 90 mil or it, something like that? Yeah, I think it was about 70 or yeah. something like that. But they paid a lot of money for him and they took him from under Liverpool's noses. Mm. Um, and Liverpool must be quite thankful yeah. that they didn't spend that money on him. Um, this one, I would be surprised if you had it. I feel like this one's a little bit out there, but I've gone to, for Ansu Fati. Okay. For Brighton. I um, had him in my honourable mention. Okay. As, as well. He didn't quite make the 11, <laughs> which is kind of the story of his season, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't um, even make my eleven. Yeah, I mean, when Brighton brought him in, I thought, wow, they've got a very good... Because obviously mm. we've, we've seen what he was like at Barcelona a couple of seasons ago, this sort of wonder kid. Um, he was touted as the next Messi, yeah, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, um, so yeah, I thought when he came into Brighton, I thought, fucking hell, that Brighton are going to be very good this year with, with this guy on the wing. Um, again, another one I almost forgot he was there, to be honest. Mm. Um, and obviously the, the Brighton, the season Brighton have had, um, I think a bit like Fatty's, uh, season, you know, it's just fizzled out and and not really been much there. And and I've sort of listened because um, there was a lot talked about him going back to Barcelona, and I think even Xavi was a bit like, yeah, we don't know what we're going to do with him. Yeah, well, he he scored two goals this season, mm. um, and that was right at the start of the season. I think he was back in August. He scored both of those mm. goals. So no, I think that's a very fair shout. Even though he was only alone, yeah, I think for what for the excitement, the expectation, and the expectation. I mean, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. he's woefully undelivered mm. so I think that's a, a good shout okay well um, I've got two that are different which is nice okay. so I I did have Mason Mount and mm -hmm. I did have uh, Calvin Phillips unsurprisingly um, I went for Caicedo over okay. Lavia I was also tempted by um, Enzo Fernandez, and then realised that he'd already been there a year mm. so uh, yeah he didn't quite make it he didn't quite make it but no Caicedo I appreciate that yeah he has Things have improved as a whole for Chelsea over the last month or so, but I don't think we can excuse the first two thirds of the season or three mm. quarters of the season. I mean, he looked. He, he looked. You, you remember Space Jam? They all put their hands in on the ball <laughs> yeah. and they all lose their skill and they don't know how to do yeah, anything. Yeah. He looked like that. Yeah. He looked like he didn't know where his two feet were. He looked so out of his depth. Mm. Um, and again, for a player that commanded the same sort of thing, you look at the seasons that Declan Rice has had and Caicedo has had, those were the two big moves in the summer. Those were the two midfielders that everyone wanted. And look at the, the sort of the two seasons they've had in terms of their own. You know, forget how the clubs have done, but their own individual performances. It's night and day. Yeah. Um, and Caicedo, I felt had he was lucky. I think that they didn't have any other options in there, and and they stuck with him for for most of the season. He's he had an atrocious, let's say, first two thirds of the season, but he has picked up. He obviously scored that wonder goal at the weekend. Yeah. Um. So he needs to have a good season next year, um, because. Chelsea have got far too many players in their books. They've signed yeah. for big money that have not lived up to it yet. Um, so a few of them. Mudrick has shown the odd flash here and there, but he's yeah. still woefully yeah. below his price tag. Enzo Fernandez, I think, is another one who hasn't, again, he's shown it in patches, but never lived up to it ac across the entire time. Um, 
so yeah, I think um, I think there's there's work to be done there at Chelsea. Uh, so Casado and the other one I've gone with is Sandro Tonali at Newcastle. Okay. Um, so I guess a little bit left field because this is a very unique situation mm. um, as to why he hasn't been playing. But I think that when you look at the entire situation and you look at everything that's happened, I think it really hurt Newcastle quite badly because it was a big media storm. You had the the, the sort of the um, the accompanying. Uh, sort of political narrative around it in terms of, or oh, did AC Milan know about it mm. before they sold him? Then like, there was potential that the FA were going to charge him as well as sort of the Italian FA. I thought, I thought he was one of last season's signs. I didn't realise he was. Um, uh, no, no, season. yeah, he came came know. this season. Um, so I think he did. You're making me. You're making me. You're <laughs> making he, me worried I now. He played quite a few games before he got banned. Uh, I'm. I'm nice. If, if if I've got this wrong. I'm going to uh, I have to eat my own words, but I'm fairly certain yeah, I could be wrong. that he uh, he was signed this season. Yeah, 2023, he did. He only played eight games. Oh, okay. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at how he started the season, he looked like a real player. Yeah. You know, that goal, I think he played against Aston Villa and battered him and scored. Mm. Um, and he looked like a real player. And then, of course, that happens. And who knows now what's going to happen when he comes back. Yeah. Um, you know, he's he never wanted to leave AC Milan in the first place. He, I think he struggled to settle initially in, in Newcastle. Mm. Um, so the fact that he's been allowed to train is a big thing because I think if he had been isolated and not been allowed to train or anything, I could I could see him leaving. Yeah. Um, and so like almost like homesick effectively because yeah. he was he loved AC Milan so much and seeing AC Milan run away with the title in Italy probably hasn't. Inter Milan. Oh, it was Inter Milan. Sorry, yeah. no, you're right. It was. Um, so I right, ignore that point. Then. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's get into the front three then. Um, I think there could be some different ones. I think here. there might be. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I've gone for Mateus Nunes at Man City. Um, as a forward. As a forward, yeah. He plays sort of like on the wing kind of thing. So, I've I've, in, I've included him as, as a okay. forward in this one. I know he does play midfield, centre midfield a bit mm. as well, but I've included him as a forward in this one. Fair enough. Um, I mean, t- to be honest, I think it was more... Be- one of the reasons as well was because I had so many midfielders and not that many defenders or strikers. So, in the end, I was like, oh, fuck it, Nunes. Nunes can play on the wing, it's fine. Uh, anyway, Matthias Nunes, he deserves a place in this team regardless of what position I've put him in my 11. £60 million pounds they paid um, from, from Wolves. I remember Pep Guardiola waxing lyrical about Nunes when I think he was at Sporting mm. and saying like he was the best footballer in the world or something like that at some point. He went really over the top. He had to backtrack on it a little while afterwards. Um, and I, just, I found this transfer just really strange. Um, kind, of, kind of out of the blue, there was no real links to it um, and there was also no real... I didn't feel like there was a real need in the team for, for his type of player. They, I think they'd already signed Kovacic at that point. Mm. They had De Bruyne, they had Rodri. They had like Calvin Phillips at that point. We didn't really know how his career was going to carry on and be rubbish this season. So I just found it quite a weird signing and I don't think he's lived up to anything close to that 60 million. Um, it wouldn't surprise... I don't think they were selling this summer, but I, he ain't going to be there long term. No. I think he'll, he, by the end of next season, he'll, he'll be gone one way yeah. or the other. Um, Brennan Johnson... I've mm-hmm. put in there 50 million to Spurs. I don't think he's lived up to it. Again, in flashes, he's been okay. Um, but I think that he's missed he's missed some big chances. Um, and I don't think he's contributed as much as maybe Tottenham wanted him to. I'm not saying he was brought in to replace Kane, but he was effectively part of that front three that together needed to replace Kane's goals. Mm. And they didn't, to be honest. Son had a poor season. Kulisevsky's been poor. Richarlison's been poor. And I think... Um, uh, Brennan Johnson's been pretty pretty bad as well uh, so yeah he's in there and then the final one I thought I'd go a bit left field with this one is I went for Cameron Archer at Sheffield okay. United 21 million so it was a big investment for, for a newly promoted club um, I appreciate that Sheffield United as a whole were absolute dross so maybe it's a little bit unfair to, to call one player out um, but when you sign someone for 21 million as a striker you want a return and mm. it, it's to, to me anyway that signing for 21 million how it's gone very much reminds me of the Rian Brewster deal that they did yeah. for, with Liverpool a few years previous or several years ago in the yeah. end and now um, and it's a shame because Cameron Archer showed a lot of promise while he was at Villa mm, he looked like he could be a good player um, but it's not worked out for, for him or for the club the championship um, might sort of help him boost up again yeah potentially um, but I, you know for his sake I hope he, he that doesn't mean that he therefore becomes shoehorned into that Championship only mm, striker yeah. um, bucket, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, Cameron Archer in there. Um, honorable mentions, just very quickly. I did have Jurian Timber on my honorable mention list along mm-hmm. with Ansu Fati, but I also had Beto, the striker from Everton, 
Um, and also had Nicholas Jackson, but I, I let him off the, the starting 11 because he's had an okay end to the season and his hold up plan link up play has improved. Um, but he still needs to be mentioned because of his appalling finishing throughout most of this season. The number of goals that man could have scored this season, mm. he would have been challenging for Golden Boot this season if he could shoot straight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he needs to be in the in the list, but he's uh, he's not in the uh, the overall worst. But he's yeah, he um, he was a late omission. I pulled him out late. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. That's mine. What what have you gone for your front three? Um, so did have one similar, but your one other one of mine was in your honourable mentions. Um, so I had Cameron Archer. Yeah. Um, Beto. Um. He had three goals and 30 appearances for Everton. I'm fairly certain. It's, it's funny because when he turned up, when he first played, we were like, fucking hell, this guy's mm. a player. He holds the ball up, he links in. He's like, this is the most Sean Dyche striker I've ever seen in my life. He mm. looks perfect for, for Everton. And then I'm pretty sure he had one of the worst conversion rates of any striker in the league come the end of the year. Yeah. So, yeah, he's had a very poor season. Um, this is the other one I said I, I might get hate for. Um, I've gone from Kunku. Ooh. Barely, barely played all season. I know he's he's another one that's obviously had nothing but injuries all season. But um, the, I think the hype and expectation and and all I ever heard was Chelsea fans saying, "I'll wait till Nkunku comes back," and I'm still waiting for him to come back. <laughs> I wonder if that was a lot of that uh, talk was because they were trying to sort of deflect from the fact that Jackson was really bad. Mm. It was like, no, it's fine. He's not our main striker. Just mm. wait till Nkunku. He's our main striker. He'll come back. Um, but yeah, even when he played, I mean, he did chip in with a couple of goals, I guess. But he never really had a, a good enough run of games to see no. what he was about. So, but I don't. Mean, I guess for the, one, it's the same reason as Timber, though, right? Yeah, he's, he's another one. Money, I think he could be a great player, um, and no, like ill will towards him at all. But in my opinion, he, this season he was a flop. Yeah, no, I, I, would, um, I would agree. Honorable mentions: um, Zinchenko. Ooh, yeah, I, I, I think I can get on board with that. Mm. I think um, overall. Don't think he lived up to the expectations that was put upon him because I don't know if he was signed as a left back. Obviously, he is a versatile player. Yeah. But you know, when Timber was injured, that left back play should have been his all season. Yeah. And again, I know he's had a few injuries as well. But you know, they've they've preferred other people in that position. Yes, they were right back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, and my other one, maybe controversial, is Gabriel Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Started the season really strongly. I believe he, he wasn't got... a new signing this year, though. I, don't I thought think. he was. I thought he signed the same time as Zinchenko. I thought Jesus was there last year as well. Let me, let me. Uh... Stop, stop, can you stop, can you stop <laughs> like, putting pressure on me. I could be right. The problem is with those, it's like it feels so long ago. It's trying to remember whether it was. Um... Yeah, he was signed the year before. Okay, well, he was. He, were, he did have. A, he didn't have a great season though. I thought they signed him the same time as Zinchenko. Oh, 55 yeah. games he's played for Arsenal already. Just the one honourable name. <laughs> right, well, there we go. Uh, that is our list of our flops of the season from players that were signed in the 23-24 season. Uh, let us know in the comments below which ones we got wrong. Feel free to give us some pelters, but keep it respectful. Um, and, yeah, let us know what your worst 11 would be if you disagree with ours. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, all those good things, and we'll see you all in the next one. See you later.